So you can see that I cut that piece out where I had the blowout, which was up in here. So now what I'll do, I will measure across here all the way across and then I'll put my uh, first piece of drywall. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be going just to this edge because the corner bead is going to wrap around. So I won't need it to have it go over at all. It's just going to go straight to this edge and then it'll go all the way around to the other edges. Now my first cut is going to be 43 by 15. So I'll go ahead and measure out 15 inches and I will go 43 inches across. Now I did get the first piece up, the first piece of drywall. And you can see I have a little extra hole there. So I went a little bit too far into the drywall, so I had to put another screw just right next to it. Now for this next piece, it's gonna be 42 by 15. On this side, I spaced them every eight to 10 inches. And then I put a couple extra in the corners and then I wanted to say too, if you're unsure about how many screws are on the outside of your project, go ahead and throw a couple in there. Now I know this has a few screws throughout here. I know there's a couple screws up at the top here. I wasn't sure about here on this section, so I went ahead and put a screw over there. But if you're unsure, Definitely put a couple next to the project, just that way it'll keep the other side from coming up or moving on you in the future. Now the next piece of drywall that I cut and installed, it's uh, seven inches by 39 inches. And you can see I put the screws about every eight to 10 inches again, a little bit more around the corners. So the next piece will be this side. Now this next piece was seven inches by 92 and a half. So after you get done with the drywall, uh, just putting up the drywall, you're able to tape it and put the corner bead on. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is put the mesh tape on and then I'll work on the corner beads. And I wanted to show you the kind of materials I'm using. I've got uh, number six by one and one quarter inch drywall screws. And I'm using a fiber tape, like a fiber tape with the mesh. And then I'm gonna be using this plastic corner bead. And this is a three quarter inch by eight foot. Start at one section, work my way all the way up and around. Well, this stuff can be a little bit of a pain to work with, but I've got time on this, so I have no need to rush it. I know a lot of people like using the paper tape, or they will use the quick setting mud, or both. So for me, I'm just gonna be using the standard mud with the mesh tape, and then I'll have multiple times to come over here and make sure that it's not cracking. Now, once you get all the mesh tape put on, uh, just push it against the drywall again, just to make sure it's nice and snug against the drywall. 
And this type of fiber mesh tape, it's uh, mold resistant because it is gonna be used in the bathroom. But I mean, once all the drywall, mud and everything's on there, it shouldn't make that much of a difference. So now it's time to start the corner bead. Now there's a couple different ways to do corner bead. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, spray adhesive and I'm gonna spray the inside of the corner bead. And I'll spray this side of the corner bead and the other side of the corner bead and then I will do a light spray on the edges of the drywall. And I will do that first. And then I also wanted to show you there is a way you can just put the mud on the edges and then you push this into position onto the mud uh, once you get it put along both sides of the drywall. So that is another option to do. And then I will probably put a couple screws, like you could put a screw or two in different areas, uh, just to make sure it doesn't move and to hold it down. And I will definitely do that on the, the mud that I put up because I don't have quick setting. It would probably work a lot better with quick setting mud uh, just to hold it in position faster. But uh, I'm gonna show you both techniques and then you can decide which one you like to do. Now I did cut it a little bit lower on the top edge here and that's just to, in case you have compression of the house later on it won't move or buckle your corner bead and then at the bottom also I have a slight gap so it's not going to go all the way to the very bottom so now I will go outside spray this with adhesive and then I will spray the edges here with adhesive Now for this next corner bead, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the drywall and the sheetrock mud. It's an all-purpose. Just take your 10-inch blade here. We just want to put a little bit on each side. And then once you get the joint compound, mostly on the two sides, you can grab your corner bead. Sort of push it into position here. And then once you get that pushed on really well, you want to go ahead and clean it up the best you can. I'm going to go ahead and take my three inch putty knife or blade and just swipe along the edge here. Remember, we're just embedding the corner bead is all we're doing at this point. And then if you need a little extra in some spots, you can just grab a little bit extra and push it into the joint.
Remember, we're not trying to squeeze all the joint compound out of the corner bead. We're just trying to embed it. That's all we're doing. This is what it looks like when I use the joint compound to adhere the corner bead to the corner. I think it turned out pretty good. I actually liked it better. It was a little more messier, but I did like it better because that sticky adhesive uh, just tends to get all over your hands and the outside of the corner bead, I had to clean that off with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean this up. But with the uh, joint compound you just wipe it off and it's good and then if you have any areas that are pushed out uh, you can just push them in and that way this is all nice and straight and centered so I think what I'll do I'll end up doing the rest of this with the uh, joint compound and I'll do these corner beads next and once you get your corner bead all installed, you can start filling in the gaps where your mesh tape's at, or just put a first coat over your mesh tape. So this is what the mesh tape looks like right now. So the corner bead, I did have to rock it back and forth a few times just to seat it in there really well because the mud was a little bit uh, solid. It wasn't very porous or it didn't run very well. So uh, it, yeah, if you have to just move this back and forth, push it in to embed it into the drywall or next to the drywall. And uh, remember, just don't scoop off too much. You just want to get it set into the joint compound. So a good way to tell too is to take your six inch or even a three inch knife and put it across like this and then make sure you can still see daylight in the middle there and that'll give you some room to fill in over the joint between the corner bead and the drywall. So that's pretty important and you can just check along different ways or different areas and make sure you didn't fill it in too much. Now the next step is to put joint compound into your mesh tape. Now this will be the first coat and you just want to cover up any kind of screws and the mesh tape and the joints all the way around. And if you have a bigger area that's dug out, make sure you get a lot of joint compound into that. So just, you want to push it into it, say like this. And then for this standard drywall mud, you want to let it set at least eight to 10 hours. I usually go overnight with it and then I'll come back, sand it, and then go ahead and put on a second coat. Now it is a little bit dark, but this is the finished product after the first coat. Now what I did, uh, I did the corner beads, I filled in the mesh tape, and I just smoothed it out one single time.
So I'm gonna let this set overnight. Now for the second coat, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a sanding block and just sand around the areas here. Sanding. It is a good idea to wear a dust mask. And I'll just do a light sanding on all the areas that we did the first coat on. See, there's a little bit of cracking in some of the areas, but we'll go over that. And then after you have it all nice and sanded, I'll use the 12 inch or the 10 inch blade and we'll go ahead and start smoothing it out a little better. Now for the second coat, I'm still using the standard joint compound, sheet rock joint compound. I'm not watering it down at, at all, but the third coat I will. This is how it looks after the second coat. Pretty well covered. I had to put a bunch of joint compound in the center just to make it smooth all the way across. And then for the other side, the same thing. Went ahead and put a bunch of joint compound in the center just to make it smooth all the way across. So the next step is sanding. Once this dries, I'm gonna let this dry overnight. And then I will water down some joint compound and then fill in any areas that might need to be filled in. And then I can get ready for texture after that. For this third and final coat, I'm going to fill this trough up about halfway and then I'll put a, about a half a cup of water in there and mix this up really well. And that'll be my finishing coat for the drywall. Now, all the crevices and indentations should be mostly filled in. Like all you have left is just a finishing top coat to smooth out some of the rough edges, maybe some of the, the pitting, um, to some of the areas that need to be touched up a little. So that should be good for now. And I'll put some water in here and mix it up. Just use a circular motion to mix all this together. And then my smaller areas, I'll probably use the six inch blade and the bigger areas, I will use the 14 inch blade.
just to smooth it out as evenly and as smoothly as I can. So the key to putting this layer on is just a thin little bit at the end of your trowel. Or your scraper. I'm using the 10 inch for the middle section here. Even though this is a pretty thin coat, uh, you do get some shrinkage on the previous coating. So that's why you may have some voids to fill in. And it may take a little more than you're expecting. Now this is the third and final coat. And so next we'll be texturing after this. But I will sand it down really well. Get rid of any rough spots. And you can see how I carried it over about 13, 14 inches. So even into the stuff that was already textured, I just blended it in. Got it all nice and smooth. Now this texture here is skip trowel and I'm going to go ahead and sand this down and wipe it down with the cloth, just a little bit of a wet cloth just to get all the sanding uh, material off of it. And so once uh, I sand it and wipe it down, let it dry a little bit, it'll be ready for texture. And then I'll show you how to make up the texture. Now I did have a couple high spots I had to sand down. But once you get it nice and smooth, and you're happy with the finished smoothness of it, you can go ahead and mix up your mixture for whatever kind of texture you're doing. Uh, like I said, for this texture, it's going to be skip trowel. So you want to go ahead and get your 6 inch blade and your plastic pan here. And we'll go ahead and put about two scoops of mud in here and then we're going to make it to about the consistency of thick pancake batter and so once we get that all mixed up uh, I'll show you how to do the texture on the wall we'll put about two scoops into here Yeah, let's go for three scoops. We'll add some water to it. So what I've got is about three quarters of a cup, maybe half a cup here. And just mix it in a circular fashion here. I'll just do this slowly so it doesn't get all over the place.
a little thin now. I might have to add a little more mud to it. But we'll see once it gets all mixed up. We'll just grab a little bit on the edge of your knife like this. Oops, more like this. Try to get a uniform amount all the way across, that way it'll skip nicely. You'll hit it at a 45 degree angle and just go up with it. So say about that much, might be a little too much, about that much there. You really shouldn't have to sand that much once this all gets on the wall. And then when you get about, say, halfway up the wall, just to blend it in, go sideways with it. And that way it'll blend the two together, the two passes that you made. Might be a little hard to see just because of the lighting in here. So let me get you a little closer to the texture so you can see it. So that's what it looks like so far. Just try to blend it in the best you can. So trying to match it with the old texture, it might be a little tricky. Uh, you don't know if they're swiping up or down or left or right. But really, as long as you and the passes that you've made, as long as you blend that in to the wall and it looks similar to the old texture, you should be okay. It's not going to be perfect. Now you need the exact same person that did the old texture to come in and do the new texture. And then if they're having a bad day or a good day or a different kind of day, their texture may be totally different than the first texture that they did. So it is really difficult to match the exact same texture that was in the house. But um, as long as you can identify what it is, you can pretty much make some good assumptions as to what it should be. You can make some pretty good assumptions as to how you should be able to match it just in the way you're doing it and the way they did it. So say if they have more splotches around, you know, you could put a lot of pressure when you start and stop. Uh, if it's really, just small little areas here. See these these look like pretty big areas. So it looks like they did put they did put quite a bit of texture on the wall when they put texture on it. So if you do have some light areas, you could actually put more on if you need to match it the way they did it if they put a lot on. So just go by the old texture and then do your texture and then if you need to add more to try to match then that is an option. Now I had to mix up another batch. Now this one I made a little bit thinner because the other one was drying pretty quick. So the reason I made it a little bit thinner, I was trying to see if 
it won't catch as much when I first put it down on the drywall. And it seems to be helping a little bit. Don't worry about getting all the lines out. When you come back in a couple hours, this should be drying about two to three hours. You can sand those down. The main thing is you're just trying to blend the two together. the spot you can always take the corner of your trowel and just lightly tap it into that spot there and smooth it down or take your knife onto that corner and lightly tap it in there you get too much or you get a big clump in there that you don't want you can always just scrape it off and start over That's the part I scraped off. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna come back with a sander, just lightly sand any kind of bumps and it'll transition into the other texture really nicely. This is how it turned out. see in some areas it's already starting to dry. Tomorrow, I will go ahead and sand it and get it ready for paint. So this is the drywall before I paint it. It's already been primed. And so what I'll do, I'm gonna paint this twice because I have to paint one side semi-gloss and the other side flat. So I'm gonna paint the flat side first and then I'll tape it on this corner here. Just going all the way up, all the way around. And so I'll have gloss on this side and then flat on the other side. Now I've got the flat side all done with two coats and then a little bit of touch up. And as you can see, I taped it where the line should be for the gloss or the semi-gloss. So in the bathroom itself, this is all semi-gloss. And I've got about one coat on this so far. So I've got another one to two coats to go.